Hi, and welcome back to the Sunder Me devlog series. So I started this version off by trying to add some grass details to the terrain. Trying is the key word here though, because I don't know about you, but where I come from, grass doesn't really look like that. But I've had enough of this, so I'm going to go to bed and hope it fixes itself overnight. Right, so I spent most of today thinking my normals for my terrain mesh were wrong, but it uh, turns out I'm dumb and didn't know there were two types of normals, and I've been using the wrong one this whole time. So I found this little script on Reddit that lets you visualise the normals. And for anyone who doesn't know what normals are, they are essentially the direction that a vertex or a face is facing, and they can be used to calculate lighting. So you can see here we have our little sphere, and these arrows represent the normals or the direction that each of the vertices in the sphere is facing. Up here we have the sun, and this arrow here is the direction of the sun. So we can calculate basic Lambertian lighting by using a formula called n dot l, where n is the normal and l is the inverse of the light direction. So to get the inverse of the light direction, what you gotta do is send it the other way, and that's it. So then you use the dot product where you pass in two vectors and if they are the same, it returns one. If they're complete opposite, it returns minus one and you can calculate lighting that way. So you can see these two arrows here are basically facing the same direction. That means it's gonna be fully lit on this side, but this arrow here is facing the opposite direction, so it's gonna be completely unlit on this side, and then it'll be anywhere in between for the other normals. And uh, these are the vertex normals here, and you can see it's very much what the grass looks like. So now if I switch it to the face normals, that is much more what we want. So let me just yoink some code and in the words of a great Kazakh, very nice. But in all seriousness, I am very happy with this. And I only nearly suffered a stress-induced stroke, so it's fine. <laughs> I also decided to switch out Unity's built-in SSAO to HBAO, where ambient occlusion or AO is a way of simulating light getting trapped in little crevices in objects, and so the intersections between objects will be darker. But uh, what the actual difference is, I'm afraid I can't tell you. I'm pretty sure I lost most of my brain cells when I made that grass. <laughs> During a playtest I did a little while ago, I found an issue with the mind saving system. The idea is that every 10 levels acts as a kind of checkpoint and I had just reached level 11, but before I could get down to level 12 I had to return to the surface. I came back the next day and found that Dropnir allowed me to go all the way down to level 20, which is obviously far from correct. I had a quick look at the code and luckily it was a simple matter of just removing a plus one from my little formula. Apparently I can't do maths. I also increased the range that melee weapons will hit at to make it feel a bit more intuitive. So the last thing I did for today was to improve the system for how uh, the player will sell to NPCs. So Dropney has no interest in buying these cherries here, but if I try and sell them to him... He'll just take them anyway. You don't get any money for it. It says I have money there, but that's that was from testing. <laughs> Uh, you won't get any money from it and he'll just take it from you. But how it works now is if I try and sell the cherries to him, you won't even be able to select it to drag it in. But you can see that you can select the things that he will buy from you. So if I sell him this log and this fish, you hear a little noise and it tells you Dropnir bought your items for 10 gold, which I think is definitely much better. Right, so last night I had the idea of changing how the AI works. I suppose you could call it a uh, rework. Wait, what's that noise? No, 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 you fuck off, Professor Rework. I'm trying to get some work done here. Sorry about that. I think he's been hanging around here ever since Randy went away. At the moment, I use a coded and spliced behavior tree, but that doesn't really give me much flexibility in the design process for the AI. So I decided to steal, I mean, get inspired by Bethesda. In Skyrim and presumably their other games, the AI works by having various AI packages, each with conditions and actions that will run once those conditions are met. I was able to write this system pretty quickly and actually ended up spending most of the day trying to turn it into a UPM package. You can download it below if you want, but I can't guarantee it works, so be careful. So I'll just quickly go through how it works. So here we have our good friend Chada, and if I click on him and go down to his little AI script, you'll see there's a list of packages. And the order that they're in is the order of priority. So the first priority is go to bed. So if I open this up, 
you can see in here all the functions. So we have a condition, has it completed? Is the condition for it to run, has it been met? Uh, you know, what it should do when it finishes, what it should do when it starts, and an update. So this just basically just checks, are we close enough to the bed? And then send him to sleep. We have one for, de -de -de, for working. And so this one essentially just finds his anvil, makes him walk up to it and he whacks it. So this is based upon time again, uh, you know, checks the distance, make sure he's close enough to the anvil to actually hit it. Otherwise, he'll just keep walking to it, uh, disables and enables his hammer in his hand. It's pretty simple. It works really well. And uh, if I need more complex behaviors, I can actually just put in a behavior tree in the update function. So works pretty well, I think. I started today off by improving the brewing barrel and smelter. At the moment, they will only ever tick once per night, meaning that to brew or smelt something will always take at least one day. I didn't like this though because it meant that the process of brewing or smelting was extremely slow, and so it would take ages to gather the resources from them. I've updated it now so it works in real time. Instead of each output taking a given number of nights, now it'll take a given number of seconds. You can see we have the brewing barrel, and here are the list of things that we can get out of it. So we have ale, which now takes 1500 seconds instead of one night. So that's about 25 minutes. Uh, cider takes about 2000 seconds. Honey only, or mead, sorry, only 720 seconds. And wine the longest at 8500 seconds. We also have the smelter, which outputs uh, metal ingots. So you can see the bronze ingot only takes 60 seconds. Uh, iron 120, gold 180, and obsidian 300. I think this new way of doing it is much better and is going to make it much more intuitive and much less frustrating for players while they're brewing and smelting. We also decided to go and find some animations and sounds for Cheyada's work package. This is what I have right now. It's not perfect by any means, but it'll definitely do for now. During that playtest I mentioned on day 3, I found that the player didn't really have much direction, so I've decided it'll probably be a good idea to give the player a couple of starting quests to get them on their way. I've decided to do two. The first one is called Getting Acquainted, where all you have to do is plant a crop, harvest it, and then sacrifice it to the gods using the summoning stone. And the second one, which starts automatically when you complete the first one, is called Teach a Man to Fish, where you have to just catch five of the same fish and sacrifice them all to the gods. And uh, all the various questing systems that I've mentioned throughout these last few videos have made this whole thing so much easier. I'm so glad I made that little gooey. <laughs> Speaking of the summoning stone, I don't think I've ever properly gone over it yet, so um, I'll just give you a quick rundown on how it works. So I've just quickly started a new world for this. So when you start in a new world, if you open up your inventory, you will see that you have a summoning stone. So if I just equip that and place it down, bonk, you right click on it and you get this little menu. Uh, and each of these are essentially sacrifices you can make to the gods. So the summoning stone is a way of communicating with the gods. Uh, so you can see here there are a few that are locked. So it says locked until we have reached level two with the gods. Uh, level two, level four, level four. So the first you get are these two where you request a summer seed. So how this works is you just place in a crop that you harvested in spring and you will get a tomato seed out of it. But as the years progress, you will get different seeds. Uh, you can request rain. So it requires 50 of any food item if you just really want rain. And the rest of these are locked. So the more you do of these requests, the higher your relationship will be with the gods and therefore you will unlock more of these the uh, two quests that I mentioned a second ago as well, they, they are done through here. And uh, finally, to really try and get into the swing of things with the setting, I've decided to try and brew my own mead. So uh, I'll keep you all updated with that and how that goes over the next few months. And that's about it. Any feedback is more than welcome, whether it be about the video or the game or whatever. Uh, if you like the video, then please leave a like. It's going to really help getting this game out there so more people can see and play it. And if you really fancy it, you can even go and subscribe. I think that'll be handy. I've also got a Steam page now, so if you're interested in the game, you can go and wishlist it on there. And I've got a Discord server as well, where every now and again I'll post some leaks and screenshots. So if you want to stay up to date with the game, 
then go ahead and join that as well. The links to both of those will be in the description. Anyway, I hope you all have a good one and I will see you all in about a month.